You've probably heard that one before. So it's never new and it never gets old and it's a folk song. We have a real affection for traditional American music in general and that's the music that preceded the folk revival and we thought, wouldn't it be interesting to start a movie with a folk singer being beaten up in the village in 1961? What'd you say you played? Folk songs. Folk songs. I thought you said you were a musician. An interesting time in American music. It was the end of some things, the beginning of others. Play me something from inside Lewin Davis. Okay. Green, green, rock and roll, yeah. You promised me. Yeah? Hey, it's me, Lewin. Yeah? Tell me who Can I come up? Tell me who no. You love. There is a bit of the comedy of resilience in a way, kind of like Buster Keaton. He bumps up against so much hardship trying to do this thing, which is this love of music, something that's very true and a real expression of his soul. But eventually, he just wants to get out of it because ultimately, I think he feels it's ruining his life. Playing the gas line for the 400th time for the basket. Actually, you'd have to split the basket. It's just one roadblock after the other, but he's pushing through, and that, I think, makes us laugh. Where do you live, Al? Nice place? It's a dump. Uh-huh. Got a couch? Well, if the music's not... What, quit? Just exist? Exist? <laughs> Is that what we do outside of show business? We were looking for a suitable actor and a credible musician, which is hard to find in combination. Since I was 12, I've been playing guitar, and when I started prepping for this movie, I really immersed myself in this kind of thing, this Travis picking and, and this particular style. Listening to a lot of Lead Belly of Reverend Gary Davis and all these guys. Okay. All the music in the movie is performed live, but we did a week of pre-records, recording all the music in the movie. The pre-records, in effect, served as a rehearsal for all the actors. If I had wings, I met a T-Bone, and he asked me to come and just be involved, and then eventually asked me to sort of be the associate producer on it, which is very serious words for what we were doing, which was basically just sitting in a room playing guitars and singing and making choices about music. There were a lot of nice, fortuitous things that happened in the casting. T-Bone had decided he wanted Marcus to co-produce the music with him in the movie. And he said he was having lunch with Marcus and Carrie. And I said, we're just in the process of talking to Carrie about doing this part in the movie. I should have had you wear double condoms and then wrap it in electrical tape. You should just walk around always inside a great big condom because you are. Okay. She seemed to sort of be able to perfectly embody this woman who sings very sweetly but is unbelievably angry. <laughs> it was kind of a great place to start, I think, because we were shooting in the gaslight and we had these extras. So we had an audience, and I couldn't get up there and be nervous because there were like 50 people watching. Singing is what just seems to be the most nerve-wracking thing to do, and especially when you're surrounded by actual musicians like Oscar and Justin. It was my first time to really take music and film and be able to be a part of the clashing of those two worlds. And working on the music was the first thing we did. If you do two puppas. Pup -pup. Yep. I sweat when, yep. pup when they stuck me in the pressure. Uh, 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 uh. Okay. This movie we worked with Bruno Dolbinell, somebody actually that we'd worked with once before for the compilation film Parisia 10. I wanted always to have the, the set to fall off in shadows. You know? The actors are lit, but then the set vanished. We actually, kind of, Bruno kind of showed us the cover of Free Will and Bob Dylan. Since I'm very familiar with Bob Dylan, I said, oh, it could be, it could be a reference. And I called them and said, that's exactly what we thought. Yeah, you nail it. A very kind of ectochrome, slightly desaturated color, gray slush New York in the winter. That's actually, as I say, what we ended up with is surprisingly at the end of the day. It's weird when the plan actually works. All right, one more before I go. If I had it's just a good solid character study. Maybe it'll make people laugh. Maybe it'll make people think. Maybe it'll get them to download some music. I was going to say go to the record store, but they don't do that anymore. We were making space in the stock room. Thought you might want to keep some copies. 
something that Dave Van Ronk wrote in his book was, if I could have gotten out, I would have. And I think that rings true for Lewin. It can go from being really, really funny. A minute later, it's just heartbreakingly sad. This film is very much like a folk song, and it, it starts out, and you hear about an incident. So the first incident is the first verse, then the second verse is a whole new story. It takes you through these verses to get to the end, and you get back to where you were in the beginning. But you know a lot more than you did when you saw it the first time. Right? And that's what always happens in these folk songs. It's a crucial American story about the thing I care most about in our culture, music. Taking off, Pop. Shipping out. Here's this. I used to like this. That's what I got.